The next question is. You want to subscribe to an Azure support plan so you can get support over the phone. Which support plan should you subscribe to in order to get this service? Please select three appropriate support plans. Option 1. Professional Direct. Option 2. Standard. Option 3. Developer. Option 4. Basic. Option 5. Premier. The correct answers are option 1, 2, and 5. Professional Direct. Standard. Premier. After the port request is submitted, there are three Azure support plans, Standard, Professional Direct, and Premier, which provide 24-7 access to technical support via email and phone. Options 3 and 4 are incorrect. With the basic and developer plans, you can only make inquiries by email. The next question is. You want to subscribe to an Azure support plan so that you can get design reviews based on your specifications. Which support plan should you subscribe to? Please select the appropriate support plan. Option 1. Professional Direct. Option 2. Standard. Option 3. Developer. Option 4. Basic. Option 5. Premier. The correct answer is Option 5. Premier. The Premier plan provides advisory services based on best practices for solving scenarios based on user requirements for migration, deployment, development, optimization, design and implementation, and performance tuning using Azure. Other plans only provide general guidance and do not provide user-specific support. The next question is, which of the following review types will be implemented as the second stage of Azure's new service launch process? Option 1. Private review. Option 2. Public review. Option 3. User review. Option 4. Limited review. The correct answer is option 2. Public review. Public review is the second stage of the review method for publishing new services in Azure. In a public review, at this stage, all customers with the appropriate Azure AD license can evaluate the new features. New features in Azure will be reviewed and released in the following stages. 1. Private review. 2. Public review. 3. General availability. Option 1 is incorrect. Private reviews are reviews that are initially conducted only by a limited number of users. Option 3 is incorrect. There is no implementation method called user review. Option 4 is incorrect. There is no limited review method. The next question is. True or false? There is no additional cost to use Azure globally across multiple regions. Option 1. True. Option 2. False. The correct answer is option 1. True. There is no additional cost to use Azure globally across multiple regions, in of itself. In Azure, the cost depends on the resources used. The next question is. True or false? it is necessary to carry out management for each region individually. Option 1. True. Option 2. False. The correct answer is option 2. False. It is not always necessary to manage each region, and global services can be centrally managed in multiple regions. For example, when performing monitoring, you can leverage Azure Monitor to collect and manage monitoring from a variety of sources in Azure, on-premises and in multiple regions. The next question is. True or false? If you are in Japan, you must use the East Japan region or the West Japan region. Option 1. True. Option 2. False. The correct answer is option 2. False. Even if you are in Japan, you do not necessarily have to use a region within Japan. For whatever reason, like for compliance or disaster recovery, you can use Azure in the region that best suits your specific needs. You can use the drop-down menu to select an Azure region and compare it to other regions nearby. The next question is. You are building a web application using multiple Azure virtual machines. All virtual machines must be assigned the same permissions. Choose the one that works best to set permissions efficiently. Option 1. Start the virtual machines on the same virtual network. Option 2. Set up virtual machines in the same resource group. Option 3. Set the same Azure policy on the virtual machines. Option 4. Set up the same network security group for the virtual machines. 
The correct answer is option 2. Set up virtual machines in the same resource group. By setting virtual machines in the same resource group, you can control permissions by setting one permission for the resource group. Use Azure or BAC to allow management of all resources in a resource group. Option 1 is incorrect. It is not possible to set permissions collectively by simply starting virtual machines on the same virtual network. Option 3 is incorrect. By setting the same Azure policy for the virtual machine, it is possible to set rules such as resource configuration. This is different from permissions, however. Option 4 is incorrect. Traffic control can be shared by setting virtual machines in the same network security group, but this is different from permissions. In addition, security groups need to be set for each resource. The next question is. You are currently creating five virtual networks in one region and running six Azure virtual machines in each virtual network. It is necessary to set a minimum network security group for traffic control of these virtual machines. Select the correct number of minimum network security groups needed for this. Option 1. 5. Option 2. 6. Option 3. 30. Option 4. 1. The correct answer is option 4. 1. Network security groups can be reused in the same way for a region. In other words, it is possible to assign one network security group to all virtual machines configured in the same region and control traffic. The next question is. True or false? You can configure MFA by deploying a federation service. Option 1. True. Option 2. False. The correct answer is option 1. True. There are many ways to implement MFA in Azure, including using conditional access policies. For hybrid identities, you can configure MFA when deployed while synchronized or federated with on-premises Active Directory domain services and Azure Active Directory. The next question is. True or false? When you configure MFA for your ID, you need to sync your on-premises ID to the cloud. Option 1. True. Option 2. False. The correct answer is option 2. False. There are many ways to implement MFA in Azure, such as using conditional access policies, but it's not mandatory to sync your on-premises identity to the cloud as a condition. The next question is. You have built an application with an Azure virtual machine. This application delivers video content. Choose one of the following as the best solutions to improve the delivery processing performance of this application. Option 1. Azure CDN. Option 2. Azure DNS. Option 3. Azure Databricks. Option 4. Azure Cache for Redis. The correct answer is option 1. Azure CDN. Azure CDN is a secure, reliable, and fast content delivery network. You can use the Azure Content Delivery Network, CDN, to reduce load times, save bandwidth, and improve responsiveness. You can develop and manage websites and mobile apps, as well as accelerate streaming media and game software, firmware updates, and IoT endpoint encoding and delivery. Option 2 is incorrect. There is no service called Azure DNS. Option 3 is incorrect. Azure Databricks integrates this collaborative Apache Spark-based analytics service with other big data services in Azure. Option 4 is incorrect. Azure Cache for Redis is a fast, fully managed in-memory data store. It is not used for content delivery. The next question is. You are building a mechanism to save log files using blob storage. This data is rarely accessed. Choose the storage type that is most cost-effective. Option 1. Hot. Option 2. Cool. Option 3. Archive. Option 4. Standard. The correct answer is option 3. Archive. Azure Blob Storage provides a variety of access tiers that allow you to store blob object data in the most cost-effective way. The features of the access layer are as follows. Hot Optimized is for storing frequently accessed data. This is the most expensive. Cool optimized is for storing data that is accessed infrequently but is to be stored for at least 30 days. It's expensive compared to archives, but cheaper than hot. Archive optimized is for storing data that is rarely accessed, stored for at least 180 days, and has flexible latency requirements, in hours. This is the cheapest. The next question is. You are considering an architectural configuration using Azure. 
Select the correct description for the contents of the availability set. Option 1. Fault domains are affected during Azure maintenance reboot. Option 2. Update domain share common power supplies, network devices, etc. Option 3. Up to 20 update domains can be set. Option 4. Up to 10 fault domains can be set. The correct answer is option 3. Up to 20 update domains can be set. When using a virtual machine on Azure for a redundant configuration, use the availability set to select the fault domain and update domain. A fault domain is a range for fault classification that shares a common power supply and network equipment. You can select from 1 to 3. The update domain is the range for updates that is affected by the maintenance reboot of Azure. You can select from 1 to 20. The next question is. Choose the best solutions for connecting virtual networks between regions. Option 1. Virtual network peering. Option 2. Site-to-site -site VPN. Option 3. Global virtual network peering. Option 4. Express. Route. The correct answer is option 3. Global virtual network peering. Global virtual network peering is used to connect virtual networks between regions. Virtual network peering allows you to seamlessly connect two or more virtual networks in Azure. Virtual networks effectively act as a single network in the connection. Azure supports the following types of peering. Virtual network peering. Connect virtual networks in the same Azure region. Global virtual network peering. Connect virtual networks between Azure regions. The next question is. True or false? The size of the virtual machine is fixed. Option 1. True. Option 2. False. The correct answer is option 2. False. The size of the virtual machine is not fixed, and you can change the size of the virtual machine once created later. After you create a virtual machine, VM, you can scale up or down the VM by resizing the VM. In some cases, you may need to deallocate the VM first. This can happen if the new size is not available on the hardware cluster that currently hosts the VM. The next question is. True or false? You can conduct troubleshooting with the scanner diagnostic tool. Option 1. True. Option 2. False. The correct answer is option 1. True. If Azure Information Protection, AIP, encounters a problem with Azure Information Scanner, it uses the Start App Scan Diagnostic PowerShell command to verify that the deployment is successful, as follows. The diagnostic tool reviews the following details and exports the log file with the results. Whether the database is up to date. Whether you can access the network URL. Whether there is a valid authentication token and whether the policy can be obtained. Whether the profile is defined in the Azure portal. Whether offline, online configuration exists and can be obtained. Whether the configured rules are valid. The next question is. True or false. You can protect your credentials with Azure Information Protection, AIP. Option 1. True. Option 2. False. The correct answer is option 2. False. Azure Information Protection cannot protect your credentials. Azure Information Protection, AIP, is a cloud-based solution. This allows organizations to label content to detect, classify, and protect documents and email. APE is part of the Microsoft Information Protection, MIP, solution. This extends the labeling and classification capabilities provided by Microsoft 365. The next question is. True or false? The developer support plan allows you to contact a Microsoft support engineer by phone or email. Option 1. True. Option 2. False. The correct answer is option 2. False. Developer support does not have access to technical support by telephone 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Only email is available during business hours. The developer plan includes billing and subscription management support, 24-7 self-help resources, Microsoft Learn, Azure portal instructions on how to use videos, documentation, community support, and ability to send as many support tickets as you need. Azure Advisor is a free, personalized guide for customers about Azure best practices, and Azure health and notifications. The next question is. True or false? The basic support plan allows you to contact a Microsoft support engineer by phone or email. 
Option 1. True. Option 2. False. The correct answer is option 2. False. With the basic support plan, you will not have access to technical support by email and phone. You can submit support requests. The next question is. True or false. The standard support plan allows you to contact a Microsoft support engineer by phone or email. Option 1. True. Option 2. False. The correct answer is option 1. True. With the standard support plan, you can get unlimited technical support by phone or email 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In addition to the support available in the standard support plan, you'll also receive support for Azure Support REST API, operations support, training, and proactive guidance.